Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of How to Draw Cars. Today, we're going to go over something that a lot of people have been asking for, speed forms with land animals. But there's two other things I want to cover. One is the contest, and the second thing is the relevancy of the information that's shared on the channel and what's going on with Hyundai and Kia and how they're inspired by some of the things that we're going to talk about today. But first off, let's talk about the contest. So first, I'd like to thank everybody. The outpouring of talent and creativity was really amazing. You guys should be very proud of yourselves. Um, excellent job. And the winner, uh, actually many people won. Many people got to take a, the course, the uh, Introduction to Automotive Design course, which you can check the links for in the description below. Uh, lots of folks won those uh, free passes to, to the course. But there was only one grand prize winner of the free 30-minute tutoring session. And that grand prize winner was Kunal from Mumbai, India. And it's interesting because his theme, his design, is completely related to what we're going to talk about today. Not only was his, his line quality, his sketch technique, really outstanding, but also he was influenced and inspired by a bird, a peacock. If you look at the rear part of his car, it is reminiscent of how a peacock's feathers are in the rear part of their body. It's just amazing. And here's the thing. He wrote an excellent essay. He had a beautiful quality to his line. He had the most original design. And his originality came from not trying to draw existing cars, but drawing inspiration from nature which is exactly what we're going to talk about today. And here's the thing. He's 16 years old with no formal training. So congratulations to Kanal for winning the grand prize. And let's shift gears now and talk about how relevant and important these ideas of being inspired from things outside the car world is. We have Hyundai, giant car company, and they recently showed a vehicle at the Consumer Electronics Show here in the United States in Las Vegas. And it wasn't a car as much as it was a crawling vehicle. If you haven't seen this thing, check it out. Now, when I saw this thing, the first thing I thought of is a praying mantis or a grasshopper. It's the same movement. Now, it also has what they call mammalian movement which means it walks like a mammal does, like a cat. And so it has two modes, but the green color and the way that it was walking up and down those rocks, to me, it just said grasshopper or praying mantis or one of those kinds of insects. And I thought, this is exactly the kind of thing that I'm trying to imbue to you guys to be inspired by things outside the car world. This is where creativity lies. Second thing I wanted to talk about in the professional world was the new Kia Telluride. And the designer at Kia, the lead designer at Kia, he said the thing that they drew their inspiration from for this large SUV was a bulldog. Now, why a bulldog? Think about that, and we'll talk more about it as we start to draw. Now, when I did the first speed form video on sea life, I mentioned that the number one influence on car designers was sharks. And if you're looking at land animals, I'd have to say the number one influence on car designers from a form standpoint and from a gesture standpoint would have to be cats, big cats. There's a reason why the car company is called Jaguar. There's a certain gesture that these animals have. If you've ever seen them in real life, they are absolutely stunning. Fast, obviously. Um, just I saw this one shot of this cat going around the corner here change in direction and I just thought man if you could have a car that would have that gesture you'd have a you'd have a real winner so let's look at cats and let's try to develop some forms based on this gesture so there's two reasons why we draw speed forms the first one is to loosen up to practice the drawing from the shoulder technique which is the most important technique if you want to draw automobiles automobile designs correctly it's different from a technique that you might use to do an illustration of a car. If you're unfamiliar with the drawing from the shoulder technique, please check out the videos on the channel about line quality and developing line quality. There's only one way to do it, 
and that's from drawing from your shoulder. So check out those videos and get come up to speed on what that's all about. The second reason why we draw speed forms is to develop a visual vocabulary that the world has never seen. One of the most important things about being a car designer, whether you want to get into a university, uh, design school, or to become a professional, is you have to have something new to say. One way to do this is through a visual vocabulary that is uniquely your own. Another way to do it is to have a design or a series of designs in your portfolio that solve specific problems in a new way. That's also very, very important. So I'm just finishing up this one and let's try another. Now, one thing to remember, there's really no right and wrong in how to do this. The idea is to, again, develop your line quality, but the forms should come to you based on what you're inspired by. And as I'm drawing this swoopy line, I thought, have I seen this someplace before? A lot of people have asked how to go from a speed form to a real car. And that's, that's for you to decide. That's for you to figure out. That's for you to pull from this work, from this exercise, and then bring that form that you've never seen in a car before to your designs and create something original and new from that. The idea is to not copy cars that already exist. That's the goal, that's the key, because no one is gonna be interested in a portfolio full of copies of stuff that already exists. There's nothing creative about that other than that you, you, know, you know how to draw pretty well. But as an automotive designer, you're going to get hired because of your originality and your technique, not just your technique. So as I'm developing this sketch, you can see I'm starting to build volume. It's not just an outline. I'm starting to create a sense of volume that the form has. And that's where the term form and speed form comes from. You want to think of it, you want to think of it as a three-dimensional object, just like a car. So let's change it up again and take a look at our old friend, the bulldog here, and why bulldogs are such an inspiration for car designers. I actually looked pretty closely and extensively at a bulldog and this particular view when I was designing the Jeep Wrangler because the Wrangler is the go anywhere four by four you know nothing's going to stop it and there's a certain aesthetic that that vehicle has to have in order to convey that message and if you notice the bulldog is unique in the animal kingdom because of how it sits relative to the ground and this is a very important lesson if you're interested in creating designs where stability and solidity are paramount. If those things are important to your design, then that's why this animal is such an influence. That's why the Kia guys were looking at it and said, you know what, this is the aesthetic that we want to try to capture. And that's what the Bulldog offers. It offers a visual low center of gravity. It, it's an aesthetic, it's a form aesthetic that says, I'm here and there's nothing you're gonna do to move me out of the way. Let's take a look at an animal that has a different aesthetic, the opposite aesthetic, a rhinoceros. Now I would highly recommend you don't try to go over to a rhinoceros and push it over, especially one that's charging at you like this one is. Probably not a good idea. But if you look at, again, the form that is expressed by the rhinoceros in the front view, it is the opposite of what the bulldog is all about. If you look at where the widest part of the bulldog is, you'll see that relative to the form, it sits extremely low. From a proportion standpoint, the widest part of the bulldog is in the lowest Third, the lower third of the form, whereas in the rhino, it's in the upper third. And so you get this negative space on the bulldog that is in the upper third or upper half, and the negative space in the rhino form is in the lower half or lower third, which creates visually a much more unstable form. So when you're drawing your cars, think, 
What do I want my car to look like? Do I want it to look planted to the road? Do I want it to have what designers called a great stance? The Bulldog has a great stance. And this is why it has been and probably will continue to be a great inspiration for car designers. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to check out the course on Udemy, the links are below. As always, thanks for watching.